What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Horror After Dark YouTube channel. If you aren't already, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell for post notifications. Me and Austin don't want you guys missing a single one of our videos in the future. But today, guys, we're going to be talking, breaking down pros and cons for the 1974 original slasher film, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So without further ado, spoiler warnings are ahead. So three, two, one. Okay, goodbye, y'all. Get out of here. See you later. Let's start the show. And uh, we're just going to quickly start off here with saying the franchise is so-and-so, Austin. We're not going to dive deep into this, but like terrible films, good films, and a great remake. Yep. I do have to agree. I actually have to disagree with one thing. The sequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, is actually pretty good. I'm, go I'm just going to say that and we're going to move on. Yeah, we're here to talk about the 74. We're not here to talk about the next generation because fuck that movie. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Austin, do you want to bring up anything about this amazing slasher film here? Yes, um, I actually got some points here. This movie is about is based on a true story of serial killer Ed Gein. Gunnar Hansen, rest in peace to Gunnar Hansen, who played Leatherface in this movie, was really good. Um, like you said at the top of the episode, this movie spawned sequels, remakes, and we have a new film that's going to be a Netflix exclusive that that's being made, but we don't know much about it. All uh, we know is it's a Netflix exclusive. We just know it's coming out. It, it was supposed to what come out sometime this year. Yeah, I think that's going to be pushed back till next year. Yeah, but we'll, uh, dive into, we'll dive into that in a future episode. Yeah, we'll talk about that when they drop a trailer or something. Right now, we're here to talk about the seventy four. But you talking about Gunnar Hansen playing Leatherface is actually interesting because apparently from what I've read, he wasn't supposed to be the main actor of Leatherface. Apparently, uh, the actor that was supposed to play him ended up getting drunk as hell when Toby Hooper called him and said that there was bad karma surrounding the movie and he didn't want to be a part of it. So we got Gunnar Hansen who showed up to Toby's house and actually got hired on site for his weight and his stature. That's interesting. And also the budget of this movie was 80 to $140,000 and it grossed $30.9 million at the box office. And believe it or not, I actually did some research here. This movie was banned in several countries and several theaters at the time stopped showing it because of its violence. Man, I <laughs> I like how you're like, man, I did some research. Yeah, Austin, I can't believe it. <laughs> but, like, I find that funny. Like, you were bringing up that they, like, sat there and, like, uh, took it out of theaters and stuff for its violence. Because Toby Hooper did try to hit for a PG rating on this film. Because back in 74, you got to uh, keep in mind, there was no PG-13. It was just PG, rated R, and NC-17. So to avoid the rated R rating, he tried to cut down with zero blood. So like the only time you see blood at all in the movie is when Leatherface cuts himself with the chainsaw and or when the hitchhiker gets uh, hit by the semi-truck. That's the only time you see blood in this movie. Well, actually, that's not the only time, because when they go to pick up the hitchhiker, um, he takes a picture of the group of people, and he tries uh -huh. to hand him the photo, and then he sets the photo on fire, and he takes out, like, a razor Spray blade, razor. a razor blade, and cuts Franklin. Boy, if you want to talk about a whiny-ass character, look no further than Franklin, the guy uh -huh. that's bound to a wheelchair. Uh, I think he's also uh, Sally's sister, ain't he? Or Sally's brother. Sally's brother, yeah. Bruh, he is such a whiny bitch. Like, I'm just, I honestly think he has one of the most iconic deaths in the movie as well. But no kill is more iconic in that film than the first kill where we see, uh, I think, is it Jerry? Or, like, he gets hit over the head with the mallet, starts twitching, and it gets yanked out. I think it's Jerry, yeah. Yeah, I think it is Jerry. It but, is. like... No kill is more iconic, possibly in horror movie history, than that kill right there. Yep, and also um, towards the end of the movie where one of the hitchhikers or the hitchhike guy gets ran over with the freaking truck. The semi-truck that's in the road and gets ran over with it. Yeah, I, I remember that. But also, what I really enjoyed about the movie was not only the characters themselves, because they were really interesting... What yeah. I also really enjoyed about this movie was its atmosphere. It, it was so gritty and grimy at the time. 
I mean, it also, I have that down as a pro as it's literally a beautiful like scenery in the beginning. Like, you know, when you got like Pam walking up to the house and it's like zooming in on her ass and shit. It, the, just the whole place looks beautiful. I'm actually, I'm actually super surprised with how well that worked and that they actually incorporated using the scenery as well as they did. But did you know the mo- the movie actually wasn't supposed to be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Apparently, it was supposed to be titled Head Cheese. Head Cheese, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm uh. glad they took Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, apparently, some uh, Texas Film Commission guy said that Head Cheese wouldn't work, and that they ended up he ended up giving Toby Hooper the name Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So Toby Hooper did not come up with the name. It was some dude named Willa Skarin. Skarin? I think so. Uh, yeah, I'll like uh, like link that down below just for people to watch. But I guess the movie also wasn't made by Toby Hooper himself either. The idea came to the film producer when he was at a department store shopping during Christmas in 1972. That's actually something I did not know about the film. Very interesting. And in the beginning, you talked about, like, the movie being based on true events. Well, that's true, but it's also false. They did it to grab the attention of the viewer to sit here and be like, this is all real. Like, only the only real parts is the facts that it's inspired by Ed Gein and, like, are the, you know, all the furniture made of bones and skulls and stuff. That's real. The leather face mask, I mean, that's based off that game. But, like, the story itself of, like, killer cannibals is just fictional beyond belief. It is, but it worked out really well. I mean, I'm actually proud with how well this movie portrayed everything in the 70s. I mean, like, you guys got to keep in mind, this is four years before Halloween, one year after The Exorcist. Like, movies like this really weren't... Fra- these type of movies were frowned upon by a lot of people like a lot of people but i just want to go ahead and get in these pros and cons here austin i agree do, who do you do, do you want me to go first yeah go ahead i went first last time all right so the pros and i do have some cons come to think of it pros for the movie the atmosphere was very gritty and grimy and it really fit the movie well um the cinematography was excellent for the year 1974 Having Toby Hooper being the director of the movie was a good pick. Gunnar Hansen did a fantastic portrayal of portrayal of Leatherface in this movie. Now the kills, while not many, were really good. Even though the kills were off screen, was fine. Um, the cons that I have for the movie, there wasn't, there's not enough blood in it compared to the 2003 remake, which absolutely murders them in body count and blood. It's not really, it's not real violent compared to the remake and um what else what else is there the kills taking place kind of off camera that's kind of what killed it for me a little bit you know okay let's hop into mine here the chase scene uh through the woods uh leatherface chasing sally is one of the most iconic chase scenes ever and it was amazingly done I mean, this was before Laurie and Michael Myers, like, with that chase scene that I do find a little bit better, but this one was, like, second for me. I actually have one more pro. One more pro. I'm sorry to joke, but I have one more pro. All right, go ahead. The beginning narration. John Lacaret or whatever his name is. By John Lacaret, yes. Boy, we should just start the video off with that. You know what? That's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to find the audio clip and throw that on here. Oh, yes, but in the beginning narration of the movie was was perfect to set the tone for the movie. Yeah, you guys are hear that in the beginning. Uh, yeah, don't be paying attention much to this now, but like I, I will be throwing that in the beginning. Uh, the dinner scene for me was one of the most iconic scenes in all of horror movie history with the cannibal family or the Sawyers setting there, torturing Sally. Uh, basically cutting her finger open, feeding Grandpa some blood. Which, fun fact, Toby or Toby Hooper wanted that scene to be done so many times that it pissed Gunnar Hansen off. Instead of actually uh, faking the cut on the finger, he actually took the tape off the knife and actually cut uh, 
Marilyn burns his actual finger open just to get it done. No. Oh. Uh, the score composed or the score composed by Wayne Bell and Toby Hooper is absolutely amazing. I mean, we got that jumping flash bulb sound effect, which is iconic to all hell. The kills. The same as Austin here, the kills, while not too bloody, were terrifying at the time of release. I mean, Jerry's kill in the beginning, just amazing. It's actually one of the very few Texas Chainsaw films actually filmed in Texas. I will be ranting about that in the ending here. They use the beauty of the filming locations very well. And each family member is creepy and or creepy as hell in their own way, with Leatherface obviously being the creepiest. My cons for the movie, not too much blood in the 74 original as compared to its predecessors. I mean, like, look at part two. And it's a slow burn towards the beginning, which I just don't get into slow burns all that much. But like this one was, this one keeps you interested. I thought the slow uh, burn was fine. Well, I mean, I guess to each their own, but uh, go ahead and give your overall rating here, Austin. I'm actually very hyped since this is your favorite horror movie of all time. Yes, I should have said that actually in the beginning. Um, this is literally my all time favorite horror movie. Um, aside from the few cons, I am going to give this movie a 9.5 out of 10. I do recommend you guys check this movie out. And this leads into one of the questions that I have before you give in your rating. All right. What are you guys still doing here watching the video? I mean, we're go gonna go watch the, the movie. Go watch this. Like we said with Halloween, just go watch it. Don't listen to us. Go watch it. Form your own opinions. Yeah, if you then don't come back it. to this video. Yeah, come back here, but go watch the movie first, just in case you don't believe us. Go watch the movie. God, it's amazing. <sighs> but you give it an eight point five or a nine point no, five. Not, yeah, nine point five. Well, I kind of gave away my rating here. I gave it an eight point five. I do love the film, but Franklin and the fact it's a slow burn drags it down just a little bit for me. I mean, maybe on a good day, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Just depends. But I am one of the very few people who enjoy the remake more than the originals. And, like, I'm going to get a lot of shit for that by many people I have before. But, yes, I give it an 8.5. Yeah, but it is a classic. Yeah, but nine, the reason 9.5 out of 10 for me, I mean, the atmosphere, everything about it, but Franklin, in my opinion, was just a little bit too much of a whiny bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love whiny stutter. You're like, he's such a whiny... Let me look around the room, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Now, this leads into my other question. All right, what's that question? Do you give this movie an absolute must-watch or a pass? Obviously a must-watch. I is mean, like, yeah, no horror fan can sit there and call themselves a horror fan if they haven't seen this movie. Or a horror movie freak. Yeah, go go subscribe to Austin's other channel, The Horror Movie Freak, for even more horror stuff by Austin. I will be linking yep. that down in the description as well. Yep, The Horror Movie Freak. I'm going to do a quick plug here. The but, Horror Movie Freak, guys, is my second channel for everything horror movie new reviews, rants, news related. Check it out. I'm even featured on there. What the hell, guys? Yeah. Go check it out. But okay, Austin, let's just go ahead and dive into your uh, Austin Daily plugs. Yep. So, <clears throat> Joe and I gave our thoughts about the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now we want to hear your guys' thoughts. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? Let us know down below in the comments. Give us your thoughts. And if you guys missed our previous episode, which was the Chucky video, click that link in the description box below, guys. Check it out. And also, my second It wasn't channel... that good of an episode. No, it was not. But... Also, my second channel link will be in the description box below. Check out that. Check out the Horror Movie Freak. Subscribe over there. And overall, guys, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support that we've been having on this channel. If it wasn't for you guys, well, we this channel wouldn't exist. You know, and I want to. I want to have somebody in the comments, at least one person, just say this. And also, it can't be you. All right. Guys, I want to know, do you guys want to eventually see me and Austin play some horror games on the channel 
when and if Austin gets an, a PlayStation for me and him to play together. I just want to know that because this is an all horror channel, not just movies. So we can do like horrorcore music reviews, games, like shit like that. But like, yeah, guys, thank you so much for checking it out. As Austin said, links will be in the description. Go follow our Instagram. Go follow our Facebooks. Everything. I love you all so much. Austin loves you. And peace out till next time.